My name is Julius Rosen, and I lived in this town of Mellos, Massachusetts, all of my life. I'm the third generation here. My father was a World War I veteran and went in for Mellos. I also served our country and enlisted from, from Mellos uh, at the age of 17. We were sent to the Philippines for the big buildup of the invasion of Japan. You wouldn't believe the hundreds and thousands of GIs that were being sent there for the invasion. But as you all know, and thank God it happened with the atomic bomb, uh, we saved a lot of American lives plus Japanese lives. When we learned afterwards how the Japanese were being so prepared with their um, airplanes, um, with the su suicide dive bombers, and the civilians were, were dug into the ground and heavily armed. God forbid that we ever had to face that. It would have been a, a real horror show. But I did get into Japan. I landed in Yokohama. I did study about the atomic bomb, and I wanted to see the results of it. And foolishly, I did go over to Nagasaki to see the results of the atomic bomb. I come back out of there with skin that was radioactive. To this day, it hurts me. The event that I went into Nagasaki, the treatment in the past 69 years, um, has been continual going to the Veterans Hospital. I can't say they didn't try. They tried very, very hard. I was there well, weekly, and at one time they put me into a ultralight tank was, which was supposed to clear up my skin. I cleared up my skin like, like a baby skin. But what they didn't, say, didn't know, I broke out with Merkel cell cancer, which resulted in the loss of an eye. Between the first atomic bomb and the second atomic bomb, Russia decided they were going to enter the war and help us defeat Japan. Consequently, we were sent to Korea to, to um, stop the Russians from taking all of, all of uh, Korea. We did land in Incheon. Incheon is a type of uh, um, uh, base that you have to go in with LSTs because the tide in Incheon is very high or very low. That was an ugly feeling to go in to a country with, with LSTs. And when you come off the boat, you've got to come, up, come into a, a small craft that brings you ashore. That was the end of 1945 that I landed in Korea. Going to what we thought was the 38th parallel, there wasn't even a marker on the ground, not knowing where we were. I got stopped by the Russians a few times. It's a very scary, scary feeling. I was not stopped in any way, shape, or manner by a North Korean, only by Russians. Um, finding and looking at Korea, they sent us, we had to have a sleeping a place to sleep that night. They were well prepared. We went into the town of Yongdong Po. It's a small town, it's about um, 12, 15 miles away from the base that I was supposed to be at. Young Don Poe, they gave us their old school building for our barracks. And then uh, I was assigned the 475th Fighter Group. It's a P-38 fighter group operating out of Kimpo Air Base. But in order to get to Kimpo Air Base from Yangdong Po, you'd have to ride the road. It was along the Han River, and, uh, and it was... Uh, not, nothing was paved. 
Uh, you, we, we, the, the, the road itself was in very, very poor condition. And then we got the first whiff of what they called honey buckets. Honey buckets is human waste picked up by people using it for fertilizer, being towed on these roads with ox. Um, God forbid you ever hit one of those. But it, it did happen. Korea was desolate. What the Japanese people did to Korea, you'd have to be there to see it. They took their language away. They took, they took their schooling away. Um, the Korean people to us were so nice. They were so happy to see us. And our job was to rehabilitation of Japanese soldiers to get them out of Korea and send them back to Japan. Grouping them together and sending them back to Incheon, back to Japan. Mm -hmm. It was months later, um, I went up to the hilltop, and sure enough, there's still four or five Japanese soldiers up there at the hilltop. I didn't care to face them personally. We went back and we let the army take care of that. Why is Japan in Korea in the first place? There was a Russo-Japanese war in 1905 in which the Japanese invaded Manchuria at Port Arthur, and they defeated the Russians. Uh, at least they, it, it came to, a, to terms. They came out here, the officers of the North Koreans and the South Koreans, and they met with President Theodore Roosevelt, and they signed a peace treaty, which is the worst thing that ever happened. The peace treaty was, give Japan Korea and we'll stop the war. That was not a peace treaty. That was like a suicide for the, for the Korean people. I was so angry at, at giving them Korea uh, there was no need for it. In 1946, I was sent back to Japan on r, &R a rest leave. On my voyage back to Japan, I had to go, I, I had, I wouldn't say the pleasure, I went to the war crimes trials. And at that time, I did see Tojo just before, he tried to commit suicide before I was there. but. Uh, they, they finished the job farm real quick. As a matter of fact, when I got into Japan, uh, they were a very, very disturbed people, and, and um, they were in awe of the whole situation. Um, they were very kind to us. Uh, as I walked down the street, the Japanese people would walk off the street, which it was not necessary, but they would bow down to us as we go by. The day that I enlisted to go into the service, in order for me to enlist to go into the service, I had to go to Boston, and, and during the war, the big automobile dealers gave over their dealerships to the, the service, and I went into the Cadillac Olds building with a couple of my friends to enlist in the service, not knowing that I was going to be sworn in the same day, which I was. I had to take the physical and get sworn in on the same day. That's the, probably the proudest day of my life. It was just an honor for anybody to go in the service in that era of time.